But in any event, we spent eight or nine days in Rakhine. No one would take us to the jungle. Everyone was terrified of Indians, jaguars, anacondas, and tunchies, ghosts. <coughs> so they would only take us as far as the back of their fields. Rakhine was very undeveloped at the time. Uh, we had a hotel that was just loaded with bats on the ceiling and rats on the floor. It was, you know, 50 people followed us whenever we went out to the street. And no return boat came because the water was low and it was the end of August. <coughs> I think we were stuck there nine days before a boat came back. We got back to Iquitos and within about two hours at the hotel, knock on the door, here's little Moises Vienna again saying, well... Now that you didn't do anything for nine days, now do you want to see the jungle? And we said, what do you mean? Of course we went to the jungle. He said, no, you didn't. You went to Rakhine. Nobody's going to take you to the jungle in Rakhine. I'm it. Oh, and we can do ayahuasca. We said, what's, what's ayahuasca? He said, well, hallucinogen. Hallucin hallucinogenical. Like LSD in Spanish. So LSD, hallucinogenical, made sense. We were all familiar with LSD. And we struck a deal with him. Let's go out three days. So the guy I called said, what story about what? What jungle drug? I never saw a story. So he, he looked for it when it came in the mail. He called me a few days later and said, you know, you just got a cover story with High Times. And he titled it, Ayahuasca, Mind-Bending Drug of the Amazon. And it it was about that first trip. So that was the first story about ayahuasca. And interestingly, it was the first national story. High Times at the time was selling a few hundred thousand copies a month. Still does, but it was a lot then. And it was the number one pass around in the country. Passed around more than Playboy, according to all the figures that magazine companies come up with. So, um, so a lot of people saw that story. And that was really the beginning of ayahuasca tourism. I got a call from a company called Axiom asking me if I could that I would give them Terrence McKenna's phone number. And I said, well, what for? So this is not a number I give out, you know. And they said, well, we wanted to lead a tour group to Peru. And uh, I said, what do, you, what do you want Terrence McKenna for? I know Peru. He doesn't know shit from Chanel about Peru. And they didn't take me seriously. They organized the trip with Terrence. The fee up front, whatever Terrence was demanding at the time, because he was very well known at that point, was probably like I should do, which is, no, I take 25000 first. After that, you come up to, with enough money to pay for everybody's hotels. I get my money first. So the trip ended up falling through. I'm in Peru. They get in touch with like one of the first email I ever got saying he's still interested in doing trips. So I said, okay. I was totally conflicted. I, I mean, I saw what was happening and what was going to happen. And I thought, you're a bad man if you do this, take people just out for ayahuasca. So to be able to live with myself, I came up with a plan called Amazon jaunts, wherein I would take people to several of my favorite places in and around Iquitos for 10 days, 12 days, during which time we would get to drink ayahuasca. But we would do ayahuasca in the context of visiting my favorite places. <laughs> 